Oh, praise to the Most High. So tonight's topic is called Solomon's Prayer. Solomon's Prayer. That's tonight's topic. All right. Solomon's Prayer. We're going to open up with the book of Kings. First Kings, chapter 8. We're going to start at verse 15. Actually, you know what? Start at verse 14. First Kings, chapter 8, verse 14. Let's start there. The book of First Kings, chapter eight, verse fourteen. Mm. Come and on. The king turned his face about, and, and the king turned his face about, and blessed all the congregation of Israel, and all the congregation of Israel stood. So now King Solomon is is dedicating the temple. Okay, he's dedicating the temple at this point. Jump up to verse one, First Kings eight, verse one. We're gonna read down a little bit. Okay. The book of First Kings, chapter eight, verse one. Then Solomon assembled the elders of Israel and all the head of the tribes, the chief of the fathers of the children of Israel, unto King Solomon in Jerusalem, mm -hmm. that they might bring up the ark of the covenant of the Lord out of the city of David, which is Zion. So Jerusalem is Zion. Jerusalem is Zion. So this is the precept you can use to prove that Jerusalem is Zion. Go ahead. And all the men of Israel Come assembled on. themselves unto King Solomon at the feast in the mouth of Ethanim, which is seven mouth. Which is the seventh month. So Ethanim is seven. the seventh month. Okay, which is September. Okay, read verse 2 again. The book of 1 Kings, chapter 8, verse 2. And all the mm -hmm. men of Israel assembled themselves unto King Solomon at the feast in the month Ethanim, which is the seventh month. So now, this, you see this feast, you're not going to read about this feast in the book of Leviticus, the 23rd chapter. You're not going to read about that. But this feast right here, they, they proclaim this feast to do what? to dedicate the temple. You understand? Because he had, he had finished building the house of the Lord. No, they brought the Ark of the Covenant and so forth. So now, as the house has been built and all of that, guess what's happening? Right now, King Solomon is done building the house because chapter 7, after he, he's building his own house in chapter 7, you understand? So the chapters before that, he was building the house of the Lord. Okay? So now he's dedicating now the house now. He's dedicating the house of the Lord. So now in verse 14, he is going to be praying to all Israel. So he's gathered all 12 tribes together. He's going to pray for the congregation. You understand? Read verse 14 now. First Kings chapter 8, verse 14. The book of First Kings, chapter 8, verse 14. Read. And the king turned his face about and blessed all the congregation of Israel. And all the congregation of Israel stood. So now the congregation say, of the Lord, hold on. The congregation of the Lord is the 12 tribes of Israel. When you hear about the congregation in the Bible, it's only always referring to the 12 tribes of Israel. You understand? Okay, now hold this. Give me the book of First Chronicles. Okay. First Chronicles chapter 28. First Chronicles chapter 28, verse 8. Read that. First Chronicles, chapter 28, verse 8. Mm -hmm. Now, therefore, the sight of all Israel, the congregation of the Lord, and in, mm. in audience of our God, kept and seek for all the com commandments of the Lord your God, that ye Come may on. possess this land and leave it for an inheritance for your children after you forever. So now the congregation of the Lord is Israel. He says, now therefore in the sight of all Israel, the congregation of the Lord. So the congregation of the Lord is the 12 tribes of Israel. You understand? Go back to 1 Kings now. Chapter 8, verse 14 again. Come on, let's go. Mm, 
Brother Bezaliel, you're on mute. We can hear you. Oh. Oh, yeah. uh, read, read verse 14 again. First Kings 8 verse 14. Read again. The book of First Kings chapter 8 verse 14. And the king turned his face about and blessed all the congregation of Israel. And all the congregation of Israel stood. So now he's going to bless the congregation now. Watch this. Go ahead. And he said, Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, which spake with his mouth unto David my father, and had, and had with his hand fulfilled it, saying, Read. Since the day that I brought forth my people Israel out of Egypt, I chose no city out of all the tribes of Israel to build an house that my name might be therein. But I chose David to be over my people Israel. So now he's saying, listen, the, the city that I chose to be the capital is Jerusalem because that's the most high's favorite place, Jerusalem. You understand? Watch this. Give me the book of 1 Kings chapter 14. Okay, 1 Kings chapter 14 and verse 21. First Kings 14 verse 21. Come on. Come on. First Kings chapter 14 verse 21. Mm -hmm. And Rehoboam, the son of Solomon, reigned in Judah. Rehoboam was 40 and one years old when he began to reign. And he reigned 17 years in Jerusalem, the city which the Lord did choose out of all the tribes of Israel to put his name there. And his mother's name was Naamah, and Ammonitus. So now, this, you see where it says, the city which the Lord did choose out of all the tribes of Israel to put his name there. That's Jerusalem. That's what we just read in 1 Kings chapter 8. So go back to 1 Kings chapter 8, verse 15 again. 1 Kings chapter 8, verse 15. Mm -hmm. And he said, Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, which spake with his mouth unto David my father, and hath with his hand fulfilled it, saying, Read, Since the day that I brought forth my people Israel out of Egypt, I chose no city out of all the tribes of Israel to build a house, that my name might be therein. But I chose David to be over my people Israel. Because the, David was after the most high God's mind. Okay, come on. And it was in the heart of David, my father to build a house for the name of the Lord God of Israel. Mm -hmm. And the Lord said unto David, my father, whereas it was in mine heart to build a house unto my name, thou didst well that, that it was in thine heart. So now King David wanted to build a house. You understand? He wanted to build the temple, but he was unable to do it because of what? We're going to read about that in a couple of somethings. Go ahead. Nevertheless, thou shalt not build the house, but thy son that shall come forth out of thy loins, he shall build the house unto my name. So now, David, the Lord is prophesying unto David. This is now a recap of what the Lord said to David. Because David had plans to build a house, but guess what? The Lord did not allow King David to build a house. You understand? But he said, your son that will proceed out of your loins, he shall build the house. You understand? Watch this. Give me the book of 1 Chronicles 28 verse 1. 1 Chronicles chapter 28 verse 1. Now we're going to go through the history of why David, why David is saying the Lord prevented him from building the house. You understand? But rather his son Solomon will be the one that will build the house. 1 Chronicles 28 verse 1. We're going to read that. 1 Chronicles chapter 28 verse 1. Mm -hmm. And David assembled all the princes of Israel and the princes of the tribes and the captains of the companies that ministered to the king by course mm -hmm. and, and the captains over thousands and the captains over hundreds and the stewards over all the substance and position of the king and of his sons with the officers and with the mighty men and with all the valiant men unto Jerusalem. So King David, he gathered all 12 tribes together. You understand? Now he's, gonna, he's, he's gathering the elders, the captains, the officers, his sons also. 
You understand? So he's going to address the nation. This is the state of the nation address right here. Go ahead. Then David, the king, stood up upon his feet and said, Hear me, my brethren and my people. As for me, I had in mine heart to build a house of rest for the ark of the covenant of the Lord mm. and for the footstool of our God Great. and had made ready for the building. So he prepared already the things that he was going to use to do to build the house. You understand? Read. But God said unto me, Thou shalt not build a house for my name, mm -hmm. because thou hast been a man of war and hast shed blood. You see, that's the, this is the reason why the Lord says, You can't build my house, David. You understand? You just killed too many people. There's too much blood on your hands. You understand? Remember, King David didn't go out of his own way to kill these people. No, the Lord put the spirit upon King David to put our enemies in check. Okay? Read that part again. Verse 3. First Chronicles chapter 8, verse 3. Read. But God said unto me, Thou shalt not build an house for my name, because thou hast been a man of war and hast shed blood. Because thou hast been a man of war and hast shed blood. Guess what? Right now, we are, we are the men of war. So that's why I need you brothers to study. You understand? Don't be playing games when it comes to this book. Apply, study, seek counsel. You understand? Read again the verse again. Verse 3 again. First Chronicles chapter 8, verse 3. Mm -hmm. But God said unto me, Thou shalt not build a house for my name, because thou hast been a man of war, and hast shed blood. And has shed blood. Watch this. Give me that in 2 Samuel. Okay. Give me 2 Samuel. Give me 2 Samuel chapter 22. 2 Samuel chapter 22 and verse 38. Watch this. You know, let's start at verse. Let's start at verse 30. Okay. Let's start at verse 30. 2 Samuel chapter 22, verse 30. Let's start there. 2 Samuel chapter 22, verse 30. Read. For by thee I have run through a troop. Mm -hmm. By my God have I leaped over a wall. Read on. As for God, his way is perfect. The word of the Lord is tried. He is a buckler to all them that trust in him. So now what you, are want, what you want to see here is, you see what David is saying? He says, for by thee, he's talking to the Lord now. For by thee have I run through a troop. A troop is an army of 200 plus men. Okay? That's a troop. By my God have I leaned over a wall. Meaning David was able to jump over huge buildings and huge fortified walls to destroy the enemies on every side. You understand? Read that again, verse 30. Second Samuel chapter 22, verse 30. Mm -hmm. For by thee I have run through a troop. Mm -hmm. By my God... Have I leaped over a wall? Go ahead. As for God, his way is perfect. The word of the Lord is tried. He is a buckler to all them that trust in him. Read. For who is God? Save the Lord. And who is a rock? Save our God. Meaning nobody. Read. God is my strength and power. And he maketh my way perfect. He maketh my way perfect. That's what the Lord is doing with us right now. He is making our way perfect by giving us what? The chance for us to repent. Get ourselves together. Read. He maketh my feet like hinds feet. Mm -hmm. And setteth me upon my high places. You see what he's saying? He says he maketh my feet like hinds feet. Meaning David could run so far as he ran faster than a gazelle. That's how fast he ran. Who did that? The Lord did that thing. Okay, come on. He teaches my hands to war mm. so that a bow of steel is broken by mine arms. Now, nah, that's some heavy stuff right there. He teaches my hands to war so that a bow of steel is broken by mine arms. So guess what? Our forefather, King David, he was taught by the Most High God how to fight. You understand? The Lord taught him how to fight. He, then he says that a bow of steel is broken by mine arms. Because guess what? King David, 
his flesh, his bones, a bow of steel was broken. So this man was a superhero. You understand? So that's why the Lord is telling David, listen, you can't build my house, David. You just killed too many people. We're reading about it right here. Keep going. Thou hast also oh. given me the shield of thy salvation, mm -hmm. and thy gentleness hath made me great. Because King David always understood that you rely upon the Lord, you are, you're going to be fine. The most said God is our strength, is our buckler. You understand? Read. Thou hast enlarged my steps under me, mm -hmm. so that my feet did not slip. Read. Meaning what? The Lord has given King David the spirit of repentance. He had mercy upon King David. Okay, read. I have pursued mine enemies and destroyed them and turned not again until I had consumed them. Now, this is when he was going and killing. He was going on a killing spree because the Lord had commanded him to do so, to subdue the enemy so that when King Solomon is going to be the king, he will be able to have peace on every side in order for him to build the temple. Read. And I have consumed them and wounded them that they could not arise. Mm -hmm. Yea, they are fallen under my feet. They are fallen under my feet. Come on. For thou hast girded me with strength to battle. Mm. Then them that, are, them that rose up against me hast thou subdued under me. So meaning what? Then the, the King David was putting the nations in fear because of the Lord. You understand? Because King David, he relied 100% on the Most High. You understand? That's why the Lord was able to deliver all these, these enemies be into his hands. Read. Thou hast also given me the necks of mine enemies, mm. that I might destroy them that hate me. You see what he's saying? He says, you have given me the necks of mine enemies, that I may destroy them that hate me. Because our enemies, they, they hate us. But the Lord is saying, he says, guess what? I'm going to give you I'm going to give you the necks of your enemies. Meaning what? They are any, our enemies are going to be trodden underfoot when the Lord returns. Go ahead. They looked, but there was none to save. Mm -hmm. Even unto the Lord, but he answered them not. Come on. Then did I beat them as small as the dust of the, of the earth. I did stamp them as the mire of the street. Ray. And to spread them abroad. You see what he was saying? You see what he's saying right there? He says he was giving them the beats down. That's what we're seeing right here. He was doing a lot of killing. There was a lot of blood that King David shed. So that's why the Lord said, listen, you cannot build my temple. And the reason why there was so much blood on King David's hands, it was because the Lord was the one that was sending David out to do this to these nations. You understand? And whenever David would go out, you understand, to war, the Lord always made sure, taking David, he, seek, he would seek counsel. He would ask the Lord, should I pursue after this troop? You understand? And the Lord will tell David whether to go or not. And when the Lord says, okay, the mission is a go, he went and did it. Okay, watch this. First Kings chapter 8, verse 19. Mm -hmm. Nevertheless, shalt thou, not, thou shalt not build this house. Thou shalt not build the house, but thy son that shall come forth out of thy loins. He shall build the house unto my name. Okay, so now, now we understand why King David was unable, was not allowed to build the house of the Lord because of the killing that he was doing. Okay, there was too much, too much blood on his hands. He was unable to build the house of the Lord. So now we're going to deal with that. Okay, watch this. Um, keep going. Read verse 21. Read verse 20. And the Lord hath performed his word that he spake. And I am risen up in the room of David, my father, and sit on the throne of Israel, as the Lord promised, and have built an house for the name of the Lord God of Israel. Remember, this is King Solomon speaking here. You understand? He's rehashing the history of what happened in the past. Go ahead. Hold on. Wait, 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 wait. Something. No, 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 no. Okay, we're going to come back to this. Go back to First Chronicles. Hmm. 
First Chronicles 28 was still in there. Okay, First Chronicles chapter 28. I'm jumping ahead now. First Chronicles 28, go back there. First Chronicles chapter 28 and verse, verse 3 again. First Chronicles 28 verse 3. First Chronicles chapter 28 verse 3. Mm -hmm. But God said unto me, Thou shalt not build an house for my name, because thou hast been a man of war, and hast shed blood. So that's what we read in 2 Samuel, okay, 22. That's what the Lord said, what he said. That's what King David is saying, what he's saying here, because of what? Because of what we read in 2 Samuel. Read. How be it, the Lord God of Israel chose me before the, all the house of my father to be king over Israel forever. Read. For he hath chosen Judah to be the ruler, and of the house of Judah, the house of my father, and among the sons of my father, he liked me to, to make me king over all Israel. You see that thing? So now he's, he's, he's explaining to them why he cannot be the one that would build the house. Although he had prepared all the building materials, you understand, the finances and all of that to get this work done, but the Lord did not allow him to do so. Read, but he still chose Judah to be the ruler, though. That's what he's saying. Come on. And of all my sons, for the Lord hath given me many sons, he hath chosen Solomon, my son, to sit upon the throne of the kingdom of the Lord over Israel. So the kingdom of the, kingdom of the Lord is the children of Israel ruling on earth. That's the kingdom of heaven on earth. The kingdom of heaven on earth is Israel ruling all nations on earth. Okay, come on. This, this verse right here is letting you know the kingdom of heaven is not for everyone. The kingdom of heaven was never given to all nations. The kingdom of heaven has always been given and entrusted with the nation of Israel. The so-called blacks, Bantus, Negroes, Hispanics, and Native American Indians, we make up the 12 tribes of the nation of Israel. Read on. And he said unto me, Solomon, thy son, he shall build my house and my courts. Mm -hmm. For I have chosen him to be my son, and I, will, and I will be his father. You see that thing? It says, and I will be his father. This is now future prophecy. This goes into Christ. Read on. Moreover, I will establish his kingdom forever. If he be constant to do my commandments. And judgment as at this day. Read. Now therefore, in the sight of all Israel, the congregation of the Lord, and in the audience of our God, keep and seek for all the commandments of the Lord your God, that ye may possess this good land, and leave it for an inheritance for your children after you forever. So now he's telling him, listen, this is what needs to, in order for us to remain upon the land forever, to rule the nations forever, we must be mindful always of the commandments of the Most High. Because when we depart from the laws of the Most High God, this is the reason why we find ourselves in South Africa. You understand? Looting shops, burning buildings. Yes. Read. And thou, Solomon, my son, know thou the God of thy father, and serve him with a perfect heart and with a willing mind. Read for the Lord searcheth all hearts and understandeth all the imaginations of the thoughts. If thou seek him, he will be found of thee. But if thou forsake him, he will cast thee off forever. So now that's clear. You keep the commandments, the Lord is with you. You break the laws of God, the most high God is not with you. That's what King David was telling Solomon, what he needs to keep in mind all the time. You understand? So the same thing that King David taught his son back then or rather his sons is the same thing today with us okay read take heed now for the lord hath chosen thee to build a house for the sanctuary be strong and do it read verse 10 again first chronicles chapter 8 verse 10 mm -hmm. take heed now for the lord hath chosen thee to build a house for the sanctuary be strong and do it he said, may stay focused, stay focused. Remember, the Lord has chosen you to build a house of, for the sanctuary. Be strong and do it. Don't be slothful in this business. That's what King David is telling his son. He's giving him a charge, responsibility. 
okay, for all Israel. So it is today. We have a lot of work to do, brothers and sisters, too. There's too much work to be done. So I need everyone, brothers and sisters, to be stay focused. Okay? Go back to First Kings chapter 8. First Kings chapter 8, verse 20. First Kings chapter 8, verse 20. Mm -hmm. And the Lord hath performed his word that he spake. And I am risen up in the room of David my father. And sit on the throne of Israel, as the Lord promised, and have built a house for the name of the Lord God of Israel. So now the house has been built. That's why here he's dedicating the temple now, because it's complete. Go ahead. And I have set there a place for the ark, wherein is the covenant of the Lord, which he made with our fathers, which he brought them out of the land of Egypt. When he brought them out of the land of Egypt. Go ahead. And Solomon stood before the altar of the Lord in the presence of all the congregation of Israel and spread forth his hands toward heaven. So now this is what we wanted to get to. Read verse 22 again. First Kings chapter 8 verse 22. Mm -hmm. And Solomon stood before the altar of the Lord in the presence of all the congregation of Israel. And spread forth his hands toward heaven. So now he's standing in front of all 12 tribes. You understand? This is hundreds of thousands of people. Millions of people. You understand? We outnumber the sand of the sea. So it was millions of us at this point. You understand? And now Solomon is going to address the congregation. So now you have to really think about it and say, okay. So if he's going to talk us, we didn't have speakers back then. We didn't have mics. So how was the last man at the end, you understand? How was he able to hear him? That's some heavy stuff, right? Read verse 22 again. First Kings chapter 8 verse 22. Read. Right. And Solomon stood before the altar of the Lord in the presence of all the congregation of Israel and spread forth his hands toward heaven. Read. Right. And he said... Lord God of Israel, there is no God like thee in heaven above or on earth beneath who keepest the covenant and mercy with thy servants that walk before thee with all their heart. Now that's heavy right there. He says, I'm going to keep mercy, okay, and covenant with thy servants that walk before thee with all their heart. So the King, King Solomon is now is praying to the most High God of Israel to be able to, uh, to bless all 12 tribes. You understand? Read that again. Verse 23. 1 Kings chapter 8, verse 23. And he said, Lord God of Israel, there is no God like thee in heaven mm -hmm. above or on earth beneath. Who keepest the covenant and mercy with thy servants that walk before thee with all their hearts. So now the Lord is the one that keep covenant and mercy. You understand? When we do what? When we walk with the Lord with all our hearts. Read. Who has kept with thy servant David, my father, that thou, that thou hast promised him, that thou promised him, thou speakest also with thy mouth and hast fulfilled it with thine hand, as is it as it is the state. Because now he's, he's praying, he's praying because he's dedicating to the, he's dedicating the temple. The temple is standing. So now he's giving praise and honor and glory to the Most High God for fulfilling the promises and the covenant that he made with his father, David. So now, because now that promise, the Lord has fulfilled it in him while he was the king. You understand? Read. Therefore now, Lord God of Israel, Keep with thy servant David, my father, that thou hast promised him, mm -hmm. saying, There shall not fail thee a man in my sight to sit on the throne of Israel, so that thy children take heed to their way, that they walk before me as thou hast walked before me. So now he's saying, listen, it says, keep the, he says what? It says, keep with thy servant David, my father, that thou promised him, saying, they shall not fail thee a man in my sight to sit on the throne of Israel, so that thy children take heed to their way, 
and that they walk before me as thou hast walked before me. So in order for what? In order for the throne, the, 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 the throne that King, King Solomon was sitting upon and the children after him, for it to be successful, guess what needs to happen? The children need to keep the way of the Lord. So guess what? Don't leave it back then. Bring it to today. In order for us to inherit the kingdom of heaven on earth, we must keep the commandments, us and our children together, so that we can inherit the promises that was promised to our forefathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. You understand? First Kings chapter 2, verse 4. First Kings chapter 2, verse 4. First Kings chapter 2, verse 4. That the Lord may continue his word, which he spake concerning me, saying, If thy children take heed to their way, to walk before me in truth with all their hearts and with all their soul, they shall not fail thee, said he, a man on the throne of Israel. So now he says, even your children, because the Lord is telling David this, to tell King Solomon, you understand? He's telling him so that what? King Solomon also can be mindful when he's sitting on the throne, so that the children, his sons that come after him, may be able to inherit the throne and be able to sit upon him and be prosperous if they keep the charge of the Lord. That's what David is telling Solomon here. You understand? So King Solomon is repeating what his father taught him. That's what we're reading. Go back to 1 Kings now. Chapter 8, verse 25 again. 1 Kings chapter 8, verse 25. Read. Therefore now, Lord God of Israel, keep with thy servant David, my father, that thou hast promised him, saying, There shall not fail thee a man in my sight to sit on the throne of Israel, so that thy children take heed to their way, mm -hmm. that they walk before me as thou hast walked before me. Read. And now, O God of Israel, let thy word, I pray thee, be verified, which thou speakest unto thy servant, David my father. Read. But will God indeed dwell on the earth? Behold, the heaven and heaven of heavens cannot contain thee. How much less this house that I have built it. Because remember, now King Solomon is saying, listen, even the house that I've built it is still not enough. You understand? For the presence of the Lord. He says it's not enough. But he's saying, listen, I'm going to try. You understand? To build such a house that you can be able to, to dwell in. You understand? Between those two cherubims or the mercy seat. So that's why he's telling the Lord, he said, listen, I know it's not enough, but I'm gonna tr I'm, I've tried to do it the best I can based on what you've commanded, when, based on what you've promised to my, fa my father, David. Okay, watch this. Give me 2 Chronicles chapter 2, verse 4. 2 Chronicles chapter 2 and verse 4. 2 Chronicles chapter 2, verse 4. Mm -hmm. Behold, I build a house to the name of the Lord my God, to dedicate it to Him, to and do to what? burn, to dedicate it be, to Him, to dedicate it to Him. That's what we are reading about in First Kings, the eighth chapter. King Solomon is dedicating the temple because the temple is done. Now he's giving praise to the Lord. Read to dedicate it to Him, and to burn before Him sweet incense, and for the continual shewbread. And for the burnt offerings, morning and evening, on the Sabbaths and on the new moons, and on the solemn feasts of the Lord our God, this is an ordinance forever to Israel. He says, this is an ordinance forever in Israel. Because remember, right now the temple is not standing. Are we dedicating the temple now? Yes, because now the temple that we're dedicating now is our spiritual temple. Because the physical temple was destroyed in 70 AD. Okay? So now we is the spiritual house, our spiritual houses that we must dedicate. How do we do that? We keep the commandments of the Mosai. We observe the feast, the dietary law, the moral law, the civil law, the ceremonial laws, and so forth. Okay? Read on. Verse 4. I mean, verse 6, verse 5. Read. And the house which I build is great. For great is our God above all gods. You see what he's saying? He says, for the house which I build is great. For great is our God above all gods. 
Why is he saying that? Because the gods of the other nations are idols. That's why he's saying the God above is, is a, what it says, the, it says, for great is our God above all gods. Read. But who is able to build him an house? Mm -hmm. Seeing the heaven and heaven of heavens cannot contain him. Who am I then that I should build him an house save only to bring sacrifice before him? You see what he's saying? That's why he said what he said in First Kings. You understand? He says, will, will, will God indeed dwell on the earth in the temple that I'm going to build, that I've built it? But what the point is this. He's, he's, he's did his, he did his best based on what, what, the, what, what the most High God promised to David. You understand? That the Lord may be able to dwell within. That's why the temple was overlaid with gold. Everything was gold, gold, gold. Why? Because you, that, you, you listen, you have to go all out for the most High. He went all out. King Solomon went all out for the most High God. Guess what? We must do the same this day. You have to go all out to please the most High. You understand? To show the Lord that you are about his business, you have to go all out. Okay? Read that again, verse 6. Second Chronicles 2, verse 6. Come on. Easy, Peter. Uh, Second Chronicles chapter 2. Come on, stay focused. Verse 6. Second Chronicles chapter 2, verse 6. Mm-hmm. But who is able to build him a house? Seeing the heaven and heaven of heavens cannot contain him. Who am I then that I should build him a house save only to bring sacrifice before him? Okay, now let's go back to First Kings. First Kings chapter 8, verse 27 again. First Kings chapter 8, verse 27. Mm -hmm. But will God indeed dwell on the earth? Behold, the heaven and heaven of heavens cannot contain thee. How much less this house that I have built it. So now watch this. Remember the house that King, De King Solomon built was based upon the blueprint that was given to his, fa his, his father, King David. Okay, watch this. First Chronicles 28 verse 11. First Chronicles chapter 28 verse 11. First Chronicles chapter 28, verse 11. Read. Then David gave to Solomon his son the pattern of the porch. The what? The pattern of the porch. He gave, he says, what? He says, King, he says, then King, then David gave to Solomon his son the pattern of the porch. This is Solomon's porch that we read about. Give me John 10, 22. John chapter 10, verse 22. John chapter 10, verse 22. Mm -hmm. And it was at Jerusalem, the feast of dedication, and it was the winter. What? The feast of dedication. The feast. And it the was winter. Of, the feast of the dedication, and it was winter. This feast of dedication here is not the, the dedication of the temple that King Solomon is doing. But what I want to show you is that the Porsche that has been referenced here is the same Porsche that King David gave to Solomon, the pattern on how to build one. Okay, read. And Jesus walked in the temple in Solomon's porch. You see that thing? So Christ walked in the temple in Solomon's porch. The same Porsche that King David was given the blueprint. Okay, go back. Second Chronicles chapter, I mean, First Chronicles 28 verse 11 again. First Chronicles chapter 8, verse 11. Read. Then David gave Solomon his son the pattern of the porch mm -hmm. and of the houses thereof and of the treasuries thereof and of the upper chambers thereof and of the inner parlors thereof and of the place of the mercy seat. So now everything that has been, remember, what we are reading in the book of First Kings, the temple is done already. What I'm showing you here is before the temple was built, the blueprint on our build the, to build the temple was given to King David. King David passed it down to his son. Although he had a mind to want to build one, the Lord said no. 
You understand? But what I'm showing you here is the things that we're reading about, uh, the, the things that we're reading about here in First Chronicles, you understand, the mercy seat, okay? The, tra the treasuries of the house of God and of the treasuries of the dedicated things. Remember, when you read the book of Exodus, you read about the different things that needed to go into the temple, the candlestick, you understand? The Ark of the Covenant, the cherubims on top of the Ark, the mercy seat, the table of shoe bread. You see that thing? Um, the altar of burnt incense, the altar of burnt offerings and so forth. You understand? So what you are seeing here is that now, remember, in the wilderness, it was a mobile tabernacle. It's the one that we would disassemble and assemble as in when we are moving from place to place. Now King Solomon has built it now in its entirety. It's no longer that mobile tabernacle that we had. Now it's a physical temple that is standing in one place. You understand? So things are going to be bigger. There's going to be more details that are going to be added to the designs. You understand? Read that again, verse 11. First Chronicles 28, verse 11. First Chronicles chapter 8, verse 11. Mm -hmm. Then David gave to Solomon his son the pattern of the porch and of the houses thereof and of the treasuries thereof and of the upper chambers thereof and of the inner part parlors thereof mm -hmm. and of the place of the mercy seat. Read. And the pattern of all that he had and, and the pattern of all that he had by the Spirit and the court of the house of the Lord and of all the chambers round about, of the treasuries of the house of God, and of the treasuries of the dedicated things. Because, wait a minute, what, what I want to show you, brothers and sisters, is this. Because some of you, when you read this, some of you get bored when you read stuff like this. Listen, me, when I read stuff like this, I imagine the things that was happening back then. More importantly, bringing it to today. There's certain things that we need in the camp in order for us to dedicate the camp. You see that thing? That's what these different offices that brothers and sisters are doing in the camp. Guess what? That's the same thing we're reading here. You understand? Right now we are putting together food pantries. Okay? When we have an actual physical building, guess what we're going to know how to do? We're going to know how to deal with the physical... With, we're going to know how to deal with the actual pantry. Okay? Give me one second. Okay, so um, jump down to verse 19 now. First Chronicles 28, verse 19. First Chronicles 28, verse 19. Read. All this said David, the Lord made me understand in writing by his hand upon me, even all the works of this pattern. You see what King David is saying? He said, listen, the most God gave me the blueprint. He gave him the blueprint on how this how this permanent temple is going to be built. You understand? Not the mobile one that we used to have, not the movable one, but this one that is going to be standing in one place in Jerusalem. Guess what? The Lord has given me the blueprint on how this needs to be constructed. Now, that's heavy right there. Think about it. Right now, the things that are happening in the camp, how the website must be put together, why the website looks the way that it does, why do we have the logo the way that we do it now. Why do the sister do the same things that they do? It's all written in the scriptures. That's why he says, and they, he says what? And all this, said David, the Lord made me understand in writing by his hand upon me, even all the works of this pattern. You understand? The way the garments are designed. It's all based on what? That's the spirit of the Lord. You understand? So don't just leave it back then. Everything that we are doing today is based upon what our forefathers did back then because of the spirit of the Lord that was upon them and moved brothers and sisters to do certain things. You understand? Read verse 19 again. First Chronicles chapter 28, verse 19. Read. All this said David, the Lord made me understand in writing by his hand upon me, even all the works of this pattern. Come on. And David said to Solomon, his son, be strong and of good courage and mm -hmm. do it. Fear not, 
nor be dismayed. For the Lord God, even my God, will be with thee. Right. He will not fail thee, nor forsake thee, until thou hast finished, until thou hast finished all the work for the service of the house of the Lord. So the same message that King David gave to his son Solomon, that's the same message to us today. You understand? It says, listen, it says, what it says, fear not, nor be dismayed. For the Lord God, even my God, be, will be with thee. You will not fail thee nor forsake thee until thou hast finished all the work for the service of the house of the Lord. So brothers and sisters, understand, whatever office you have, the Lord is with you. You understand? Don't, fear, don't be fearful, neither be dismayed, don't be discouraged, the Lord is with you. You understand? To get this work done, to get this work come about. So stay focused, stay in the spirit. We have much work to do before us. You understand? Okay, go back to First Kings now. First Kings chapter 8. First Kings chapter 8 and verse 28. First Kings chapter 8 verse 28. Mm -hmm. Yet have thou respect unto the prayer of thy servant and to his supplication, O Lord my God, to hearken unto the voice Unto the cry and to the prayer, which thy servant prayeth before thee today. Now read verse 28 one more again. This is a heavy thing that he's saying right here. Watch this. Read again. First Kings chapter 8, verse 28. Yet have thou respect unto the prayer of thy servant and to his supplication, O Lord my God, to hearken unto the cry and to the prayer, which thy servant prayeth before thee today. So now what he's saying is that, remember verse 27, he's saying, listen, the heaven of heavens cannot even contain thee, much less this house that I've built it for you. But what he's saying, he says, yet have thou respect unto the prayer of thy servant and to his supplication, meaning what? I'm humbling myself, O Lord my God, to hearken unto the cry and to the prayer which thy servant prayeth before thee today. So his praise is pleading with the Lord and said, listen to my prayers, have respect unto my prayers, for all Israel, for Israel's sake. That's what he's saying. Because of the temple that we're dedicating, that you may be upon this house day and night. Read. That thine eyes may be open toward this house night and day, mm -hmm. even toward the place of which thou hast said, my name shall be there, that thou mayest hearken unto the prayer which thy servant shall make toward this place. You see what he's saying? So he's begging the Lord to say, listen, Father, the prayers that we are making for all Israel, when they pray to us this place, you understand? And, 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 and seek, and seek thee all the day, be upon this house day and night. You understand? So that's so th likewise what King Solomon was praying about. So that's the same prayer we must pray on a daily basis on this day, in these last, especially in these last days. You understand? We want the most high God to be among us. We want the Lord to walk among our camp. Okay? Watch this. Give me the book of Deuteronomy real quick. Okay? Give me the book of Deuteronomy chapter... Um, Deuteronomy chapter 19. Okay? Deuteronomy chapter 19 and verse 9. Watch this. Deuteronomy chapter 19 verse 9. If thou shalt keep all these commandments to do mm, the hold on, wait, 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 wait. No, I don't think that's what I want. I do want Deuteronomy, but I don't want that one. The one I want. Uh no, not that one. Hold on a second. Hey, bear with me, brothers and sisters. I'm definitely battling with these Bibles because now I'm transferring notes and all of that. So just give me one second. Yes, I was just, I'm looking right at it. Deuteronomy 23 verse 14, read that. Deuteronomy 23 verse 14. Mm. For the Lord thy God walketh in the midst of thy camp. Read. To deliver thee 
and to give up thine enemies before thee. Therefore shall thy camp be holy, that he may see no unclean thing in thee, and turn away from thee. Now that's a heavy thing right there. Read that again, verse 14. Deuteronomy 23, verse 14. Read that again. Deuteronomy 23, verse 14. Mm -hmm. For the Lord thy God walketh in the midst of thy camp to deliver thee, and to give up thine enemies before thee. Therefore shall thy camp be holy, that he see no unclean thing in thee, and turn away from thee. So now it's very important that we make sure that we always stay in the spirit. You understand why? Because the most the most that God has given us is given us grace to get ourselves right. You understand? So now, now that we've been given the opportunity to get ourselves together, we must fight to do that thing to keep to make sure that the camp is holy, the camp is clean. That's why it says, uh, "For the Lord thy God walketh in the midst of thy camp." We want the Lord to walk within this camp, soldiers of Christ to bless it and to be upon it all day and night. You understand? Not just soldiers of Christ, but soldiers of Christ is just the name of the organization. But this mission really is to wake up the 12 tribes of Israel. So we want the Most High God to be upon all the camps that are doing the work. You understand? Day and night, the Most High God must be upon all the camps that are doing the work so that we can get up out here and go home. So that's the prayer. That's the same prayer that King Solomon had. That's the prayer this day. Watch this. Give me 2 Chronicles chapter 16. Okay. 2 Chronicles chapter 16 and verse 9, I believe. 2 Chronicles chapter 16. 2 Chronicles chapter 16 and verse 9. Read that. 2 Chronicles 16 verse 9. Mm -hmm. For the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout all the earth. Mm. throughout the whole earth Ray. to show himself strong in the behalf of them whose heart is perfect toward him. You see that thing? Here in. Hold on. Wait. Uh, okay, read that part again. Verse 9. I'm sorry. Read verse 9 again. Second Chronicles. Second Chronicles chapter 16 verse 9. For the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth to show himself strong in the behalf of them whose heart is perfect toward him. Herein, thou hast done foolishly. Wait, wait, wait. Brother John, put yourself on mute. The hell is this? Read that again, verse 9. Second Chronicles chapter 16, verse 9. For the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth to show himself strong in the behalf of them whose heart is toward him. No. Herein, he says, whose heart is perfect toward him. So guess what? He says that the eyes of the Lord, he says, they run to and fro throughout the whole earth to show himself strong in the behalf of them whose heart is perfect toward him. You see that thing? So that's what the Lord does. The most High God, his spirit is be moving up and down the earth to make sure that whosoever is perfect toward him, the Lord says, I'm going to pour my spirit upon you. You understand? That's what right now, as a people, we are, we are at the bottom because why? We are, our heart is not perfect towards the Lord. So now the Lord is looking for those men and women that their heart is going to be perfect towards him and he's going to pour his spirit unto them so they can raise up men and women upon this earth so we can go home. You understand? So now, watch this. Read the next part of that verse. Come on. He says, herein, read that part. Come herein on. hast thou herein thou hast done foolishly. Therefore, from henceforth, therefore, from henceforth, thou shalt have wars. So now this is the Lord speaking to King Asa. King Asa was a righteous king, but there was a time where he got the death. The devil jumped on him at some point. You understand? But the point is, he was a righteous king. But you see the point right here? What is happening here is that. There was something that he, he there was a there was a problem in his life that he needed to deal with. You understand? There was war against him. You understand? The Ethiopians they they came against they, 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 the Syrians actually not the Ethiopians because the Ethiopians we put them to flight. But the the the, the Syrians 
He, consult, he made a league with the Syrians against Israel instead of relying upon the Lord as he has been doing. And the Mosaic God, he, he had mercy upon him. He sent a prophet to come and warn him. He ignored it. You understand? And then he was smitten with the disease. But the point is, the Lord is looking for that thing. So likewise, because the Mosaic doesn't deal with us as individuals. He deals with us as a nation. Right now, this is what we are doing right now. We are building the nation of Israel. You understand? That's what we are doing right now. Building the nation of Israel so we can rule the earth once more. Okay? So now, go back to Deuteronomy 23 verse 14 again. Deuteronomy chapter 23 verse 14. Mm -hmm. For the Lord thy God walketh in the midst of thy camp to deliver thee and to give up thine enemies before thee. Therefore shall thy camp be holy, that he see no unclean thing in thee, and turn away from thee. You see what the Lord does? So when we have, we have uncleanness in our spirits, the Lord says, I'm going to turn away from you. You understand? Until you get yourself right. So that's why we have to do what? We have to seek counsel. We have to apply what is written in the scriptures. We have to meditate upon the things that we study about. Okay, that's how we're going to be. We're going to make sure that our minds is always stayed on the Lord. Okay, so go back to First Kings now. First Kings chapter 8. First Kings chapter 8 and verse 29 again. First Kings chapter 8 verse 29. Mm -hmm. That thine eyes may be open toward this house night and day, even toward the place of which thou hast said, my name shall be there, that thou mayest hearken unto the prayer which thy servant shall make toward this place. Come on. And hearken thou to the supplication of thy servant and of thy, and of thy people Israel, when they shall pray toward this place, and hear thou in heaven thy dwelling place, and when thou hearest, forgive. You see what he's saying? It says, so when we humble ourselves and the Lord is with us and the Lord is among our camp, he's walking among our camp. It says, when we, we, when we pray to the Lord towards this place, and he says, hear thou their prayer in heaven, their dwelling place. And when thou hearest, forgive. Meaning forgive your people Israel when they what? When they humble down and do what is written in this book and prays towards this place, he says, hear thou their prayer in heaven, their, their dwelling place and forgive their sins. So King Solomon was giving us a what? He was giving us a blueprint on how to get the most high God's attention. We must do as it is written. That's how we're going to get his attention. Because the Lord doesn't have to think about us. He's got, listen, he's, there's too, much, too many things that he's dealing with of the universe. You really think that um, he has to think, does he really have to think about us? No, he doesn't. He doesn't. You understand? But to, in order for us to get the Lord's attention, we must keep his commandments. That's how we get his attention. You understand? Read. If any man trespass against his neighbor mm -hmm. and an oath be laid upon him to cause him to sway, and the oath come before thine altar in this house. Read. Then hear thou in heaven and do and judge thy servants condemning the wicked to bring to bring his way upon his head and justifying the righteous to give him according to his righteousness. So now he's dealing with the civil law. It's as if there's a problem within a brother, be, between brother and brother, sister and sister. It says, guess what? It says, we must be able to judge the matters righteously. We must justify the righteous and condemn the wicked. That's what he's saying. If there's a matter between brother and brother, sister and sister, these are the civil laws that he's going into. You understand? Because if there's a problem and the problem doesn't get resolved, guess what? It causes problems in the nation. So that's why he's saying in order for us to continue to be blessed, to continue the Lord to be with us, we must make sure that we have that covenant of what? The covenant of salt, peace among us. Okay? Watch this. Give me that in Deuteronomy 25 and 1. Deuteronomy chapter 25 and verse 1. Deuteronomy chapter 25 verse 1. Mm -hmm. 
if there be a controversy between men and they come unto judgment, that the judges may judge them, then they shall justify the righteous and condemn the wicked. You see that thing? That's the same thing that King Solomon just said. You understand? That's the same thing that King Solomon said. And where is he getting it from? He's getting it from here. You understand? Read that again, verse 1. Deuteronomy chapter 28, 25, verse 1. If there be a controversy between men and, and they come to judgment, that the judges may judge them, then they shall justify the righteous and condemn the wicked. You see what he's saying? He says that the judges may judge them because there was judges in Israel. You understand? That's why we have the book of judges to judge matters. Leaders and elders in Israel to judge the matters righteously according to the scriptures. You understand? So this all obviously destroys that thing that says only God can judge me. Obviously that does not work here. Go ahead. And it shall be if the wicked man be worthy to be beaten, that the judge shall cause him to lie down and to be beaten before his face, according to his fault, by a certain number. You see that thing? According to his fault, meaning what? You must condemn the wicked and justify the righteous. Watch this. Deuteronomy 17, verse 8. Deuteronomy chapter 17, verse 8. Read there. Deuteronomy chapter 17, verse 8. If there arise a matter too hard for thee in judgment, between blood and blood, between plea and plea, mm -hmm. and between stroke and stroke, come on, being matters of controversy within thy gates, meaning what? Then within shalt thou gate? arise and get thee within, up within thy gates, because in thy gates is talking about what the leadership. You understand? The leadership is the one that is going to judge the matters, because now. People are coming before the judges to be able to, the, for the judges to hear the matters. You understand? So what he's saying is that he's just repeating the same thing that we just said in Deuteronomy 25. But he, here he's going to give us more details. Okay? Go ahead. Then shalt thou arise and get thee up into the place which the Lord thy God shall choose. Read. And thou shalt come unto the priests, the Levites, and unto the, and unto the judge that shall be in those days, and inquire, and they shall show thee the sentence of judgment. Read, come on. And thou shalt do according to the sentence, which they of that place which the Lord shall choose shall show thee, and thou shalt observe to do according to all that they inform thee. So now this is talking about you take the matters to the judges, the judges that will be able to deal with the matter and judge it righteously. He says, guess what? You must do according to the counsel that you were given based on what is written, based on the matter that has been brought before the judges to judge the matter. Don't go outside of that judgment. Don't go outside of the counsel and do your own thing. Yes, I'm listening to this, but I'm going to do this. He says, don't do that. Go ahead. According to the sentence of the law, which they shall teach thee, and you according to the thing? judgment. Hold on. It says, according to the sentence of the law, which they shall teach thee. The sentence of the law is written in this book. The law is written in this book, and the sentence thereof, based on whatever the problem is, we go into the law to deal with the problems. Read. And according to the judgment, which they shall tell thee, thou shalt do. Mm -hmm. Thou shalt not decline from the sentence which they shall show thee to the right hand or to the left. You see what he's saying? He says, you shall do according to exactly what you have been commanded. He says, thou shalt not decline from the sentence which they shall show thee to the right hand nor to the left. Go ahead. And the man that will do presumptuously mm -hmm. and will not hearken unto the priest that standeth to minister there before the Lord thy God, or unto the judge, even that man shall die, and thou shalt put away the evil from Israel. You see that thing? So when you are presumptuous, meaning what? You are given a counsel to follow it. You don't follow it, you are presumptuous. The judgment for that was death. So it is today. 
But the Lord is the one that brings forth the judgment. He's the one that brings forth the death and the destruction. But he say the reason why that was done is so that what? Is so, so shall thou put away evil from among Israel. Next verse, watch this. And all the people shall hear and fear and do no more presumptuously. He says, the reason why it was done publicly is so that he said what? And all the people shall, fe- shall hear and fear and do, no- and do no more presumptuously. Meaning what? Being self-willed. That's what presumptuous means. Self-willed. Okay? Let's go back. First Kings chapter 8, verse 32 again. First Kings chapter 8, verse 32. Mm -hmm. then hear thou in heaven and do and judge thy servants condemning the wicked so bring his way upon his head and justifying the righteous to give him according to his righteousness you see that thing justify the righteous to give him according to his righteousness read on come on Verse 33, when thy people Israel be smitten down before the enemy, because they have sinned against thee, and shall turn again to thee, and confess thy name, and pray, and make supplication unto thee in this house. Read. Then hear thou in heaven, and forgive the sin of thy people Israel, and bring them again into the land, unto the land which thou gavest unto their fathers. So now he's saying, listen, when if our people, as a people, we sin against the Lord, you understand? We, we, we get smitten by our enemies because we sinned against the Lord. He says, guess what? We must confess his name and pray and make supplication unto the Lord in this house, meaning the temple that we are dedicating. He says, then hear thou in heaven and forgive the sin of thy people Israel and bring them again unto the land which thou gavest unto their fathers. Right now, the, the reason why right now we are, not into the, we are not in the land of our fathers is because we have sinned. The reason why we are now in the, we are, we are in the hands of our enemies is because we have sinned. We have been overthrown. The Lord allow us, allowed us to be overthrown because we sinned against him. You understand? That's why we are in the state that we are in right now. But the Lord is waking us up. All praises to the Lord for that day. Go ahead. When heaven is shut up mm-hmm. and there is no rain because they have sinned against thee, if they pray toward this place and confess thy name and turn from their sin, when thou afflictest them. So now what you want to notice here in verse 35, verse 35 is heavy. You understand? Verse 35 is a heavy verse. Read that again. We're going to go somewhere else. I need to go to Jeremiah. Read verse 35. First Kings 8.35. First Kings chapter 8, verse 35. Mm-hmm. When heaven is shut up and there is no rain, because they have sinned against thee, if they pray toward this place and confess thy name and turn and turn from their sin, and when thou afflictest them. So now the Lord will afflict the Lord afflicts us because what? The reason why there's no rain is because of sin. When there's drought, there's no rain, the, the cows are dying. The livestock is dropping dead. There's no water. There's no grass. Listen, because the rain, the Lord is not bringing rain. It's because of sin of the children of Israel. Because I remember even when I was growing up, whether it was in primary and high school, every year, there was a time every year where there was always a drought. And the cows and the goats and the sheep, they were just dying. You understand? It will just die by itself. And some of the cows, especially the cows, you see, it's sitting down because it's thirsty. There's no water. There's no food. So it's unable to get up. I remember we used to help them to get up. We used to do that. We used to help the cows to get up. You understand? Some of them, it was so bad that, listen, it had to be slain. We had to slaughter it before it gave up the ghost because we can see, like, listen, is 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 gonna die of hunger okay all because we have sinned 
Because I remember one of the teachers, I think I was in primary school. One of the teachers, there was drought, okay? As it, it, as it was a common thing. Guess what? He gathered all the, the, the whole school. We went outside and we were singing. We was praying. Okay, I think I was maybe seven or something. We were singing. We was praying. We was praying for rain. And guess what? Later that day, it was pouring. It poured. You understand? Because we were still in our innocency. And so it poured. Rain poured on that day. You understand? Because we have sinned against the Lord. I still remember that thing. Watch this. Give me, give me the book of Jeremiah chapter 31 verse 35. Read that. Jeremiah 31 verse 35. Jeremiah chapter 31 verse 35. Come on. Thus saith the Lord, which giveth the sun for lights by day, mm -hmm. and the ordinances of the moon, and of the stars for light by night, Read. which divided the sea when the waves thereof roll. The Lord of hosts is his name. So now he's giving you the sun, the moon, and these are the ordinances, right? They are there to do what? They never faint in their watches. Give me that in Sarah. Okay, give me Sarah 43. Ecclesiastes chapter 43. Sirach 43, read Sirach 43 and verse 10. Ecclesiastes chapter 43 verse 10. Mm -hmm. At the commandments of the Holy One, they will stand in their order and never faint in their watches. So the sun, moon, and stars, and the clouds, and they never faint in their watches. They do what they're supposed to. Because they, 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 every month, there's a new moon. You see a new moon outside? Every month. You understand? Every new month, you see a full moon outside. They never stop because Israel is not getting themselves together. Their job up there is to serve us, but Israel is bugged out. You understand? So now, go back to Jeremiah now, 31. Read verse 36 now. Come on, Jeremiah 31, verse 36. Read that. Okay, come on, brother hey guy, what's going on with you? Why are you dropping off the call? You must let us know. Okay, read Jeremiah 31, 36. Come <clears throat> on, bro. I need you to stay focused. Stay with me. Apologies, sir, it was a network. Okay, read verse 36 now. Jeremiah chapter 31, verse 36. Mm -hmm. If the ordinances depart from before me, he said the Lord. If those ordinances, come on. If those ordinances depart from, from before me, said the Lord. Right. Then the seed of Israel also shall cease from being a nation from before me forever. So now what Jeremiah is teaching us, Jeremiah is teaching us that, listen, we are connected to these things. These ordinances, we are connected to them and they are connected to us. So when we don't get it together, guess what? Yes, they, they don't faint in their watches, but guess what? They are, they, are, they, are, they are not fulfilling the stuff that they're supposed to because Israel is not getting himself together. You understand? We are too busy worried about toy toying and marching and looting and doing having abortions, committing adultery, guess what? That's why it says the whole earth is out of order. The whole foundation of the earth is out of course. Why? Because Israel is out of course. So what happens is that when we sin, the Lord says, I'm not going to give you rain. Because the ordinances up there, their job is to do what? Is to respond to us. The, everything we do, they respond to us. So when, when we don't do what we're supposed to, they also don't respond. They don't do nothing. That's how much we are connected to every bit of God's creation. You understand? Nothing moves on this earth without Israel. Understand that? Okay? Go back to where was that now? The book of First Kings. Let's go back there. First Kings chapter 8, verse 35 again. 
First Kings chapter 8, verse 35. Mm-hmm. When heaven is shut up and there is no rain, because they have sinned against thee, if they pray toward this place and confess thy name and turn from their sin when thou afflictest them. So now what we want to notice is that if there's no rain, what happens next? They, they, that means there's famine. No rain means no fa- No rain means famine. Hunger. You understand? No rain means famine means hunger. Starvation. Because of what? Sin. Because of Israel's sinning. What you want to notice is that the Most High God has got so much mercy upon us, right? That from one captivity after another, the Lord has just been delivering us from one captivity after another. But what does Israel do? Israel do what they always do best. Break the commandments. You understand? So much so that even the food we eat is based on us keeping the commandments because when we don't keep the commandments, there's no rain. Guess what happens upon this earth? The animals die. You understand? The animals, they die. And when the animals die, that means the creeping things also, they die because there's no water. There's no grass growing. You understand? What are they going to eat? The birds, what are they going to feed on? All of which because Israel is the one that does not want to get it together. And we affect everything else. That's why now the dogs just be barking out of nowhere. you passing by. They are mad as hell. You understand? All because Israel doesn't want to get it together. Watch this. Give me the book of Deuteronomy 28 verse 23. Okay? The book of Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 23. I just want to deal with the famine just for a second. Okay, because there's no rain, because of sin. Deuteronomy 28, verse 23. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 23. Mm-hmm. And thy heaven that is over thy head shall be brass, and the earth that is under thee shall be iron. You see what he's saying? The heaven that is over thy head shall be brass. If the heaven is over us, is brass, that means there's no rain. The Lord is not going to bring rain down upon this earth. That's what that means. You understand? And the earth that is under thy feet shall be iron. Nothing is going to grow. Read. Thus it, thus the Lord. No, no. Verse 24. Verse 24. Mm-hmm. The Lord shall make the rain of thy land powder and dust. Read. From heaven shall it come down upon thee until thou be destroyed. How are we going to be destroyed? We're going to be destroyed with what? With hunger and famine and drought, starvation. You understand? Because of what? Sin. So that's what the Lord is teaching us here. Read that again. Verse 24. Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 24. The Lord shall make the rain of thy land powder and dust. From heaven shall it come down upon thee until thou be destroyed. Until we are destroyed as a people because of hunger. You understand? No, no rain, famine. Because of what? Sin. And guess what? When you look at the news, when you watch the news, you see how people are behaving, they are be stealing, and they are taking food. What is that letting you know? Famine is already taking place. I hope you brothers and sisters can see that. Famine is already taking place. Some people don't see that thing. Even in the camp, brothers and sisters just blinded. They don't see what's going on. Look at the level of looting that our people are doing. Because, yes, there's TVs that are being taken and all that, But 90% of the things that are being taken is what? Food. 90% of the things that are taken that are looted from the shops is food. Okay? This is letting you know, guess what? The famine is, the famine is, is hit the land. The famine has hit the land already. You see by the effect, you see how the people are moving. The stuff that they are stealing from the shops and looting and all of that is sugar, mealy, mealy, oily, things of that nature, food, things to eat. It's letting you know we are already in the, in the midst of a famine. That's what it's telling you. Okay, I hope you brothers and sisters can see that thing. Jeremiah 14 verse 3. Watch this. Jeremiah chapter 14, verse 3. Mm-hmm. And their nobles 
have sent their little ones to the waters. They came to the pit and found no water. They returned with their vessels empty. Mm. They were shamed and confounded and covered their heads. And covered their heads because they shamed, of course, because they remembered they, be, they had to bethink themselves, understanding that it's because of our sins. That's why he says they went to the what? To get to the wells to get water. There was no water. Why? Because there's no rain. What's the problem? Sin in Israel. Okay? So right now, when you see our people stealing food and all of that, what is that telling you? It's telling you there's a lot of sin in Israel. And these are the last days. Give me that in 2nd Ezra chapter 5. Okay? 2nd Ezra 5 is 3. Watch this. Second is chapter five is yeah, verse two. Verse two. Second is chapter five is two. But iniquity shall be increased above that which now thou seest, or that thou hast heard long ago. You see what Ezra is saying? Is that sin is going to increase in the last days above meaning what is gonna be beyond yet you can possibly imagine. There's gonna be a lot of sin upon this earth, it's gonna increase. This is during the time of the Persian Empire. Now, we are under America now. You understand? How long ago has it been? It's thousands of years now. So now, because of that, because of sin, that's what you are seeing now. Look at the, how the people are looting. 90% the of the stuff they are looting is food. Because of what? That's famine. Because of what? Sin. You see that? Because of sin. Understand what's going on here. Okay? Jeremiah 14, read the part again. Jeremiah chapter 14, verse 3 again. Jeremiah chapter 14, verse 3. Mm -hmm. And their nobles have sent their little ones to the waters. They came to the pits and found no water. They returned with their vessels empty. They were ashamed and confounded and covered their heads. Go ahead. Because the ground is chapped. The ground for is there is no rain in the earth. Hold on. The ground is chapped because there is no rain in the earth. Why? Because of Israel is in the midst of sin. You understand? So the same thing that we are reading in Jeremiah is the same thing that we read in Deuteronomy 28. Okay, come on. For there is no rain in the earth. The plowmen were ashamed. They covered their heads. Because their job is to go to the field and plow. You understand? So that crops can grow. So people can harvest and have food. Read. Yea, the hind also carved in the field and forsook it because there was no grass. Because there was no grass. Now the creeping things, now they're not going to eat nothing because there's no grass. Livestock, they're not going to have grass to eat from. Read. Come on. And the wild asses did stand, uh, did stand in the high places. They snuffed up the wind like dragons. Their eyes did fail because there was no grass. Because there was no grass. Go ahead. O oh Lord, though our iniquities testify against us. You see that thing? Would... Our iniquities testify against us. How are they testifying against us? From verse 3 all the way to verse 6. That's how they are testifying against us. Because there's no rain, there's no water. You understand? The ground is chapped because, because of what? Because of sin. So now, these things are happening in the earth as a testimony against us. Right now, when you see, I mean, just really look at it. I'm going back to the looting now. It doesn't look natural, does it? It's, it's, this is letting you know something is going on in the spirit. This is the most High God written all over it. The Lord is, is the one that is activating all our people to do what they are doing. Why? So that their, their behavior will testify against them that they are in the midst of sin. But our people still won't listen to that though. You understand? Because they are too clever. So what you are seeing here is that that's why our forefathers, they are acknowledging their offense. It says, oh Lord, though our iniquities testify against us. That's what's going on right now. Our iniquities as a nation is testify against us. That's why you see our people doing the things that they do right now all over the news. Okay? Read verse 7 again. Jeremiah 
Jeremiah chapter 14 verse 7. O Lord, though our iniquities testify against us, do thou it for thy name's sake, for our backslidings are many. We have sinned against thee. You see what he's saying? For our backsliding are many because we have sinned against the Lord. We have sinned against the Lord. We have sinned against the Lord. Now our sins are testifying against us. Now it's for all the world to see right now. That's what's going on right now. Okay. Go back to 1 Kings 8.35. Let's go back there. First Kings chapter 8, verse 35. Mm. When heaven is shut up and there is no rain, because they have sinned against thee, if they pray toward this place and confess thy name and turn from their sin, when thou, when thou afflictest them. Read. Come on. Heaven. And forgive the sin of thy servants and of the and of thy people Israel, that thou teach them the good way wherein they should walk, and give rain upon thy land, which thou hast given to thy people for an inheritance. You see that thing? So now an inheritance, you see, rain is an inheritance as well. Rain is an inheritance of the Lord, because that's a blessing. Rain is blessings, okay. Because the Lord will bless the land, then we're going to be able to plant crops and all of that. And our animals, our livestock will be able to eat, our children will be able to eat and so forth. So rain is the greatest blessing. One of the greatest blessings on earth is rain. You understand? So that's what we're seeing here. It says that thou teach them the good way wherein they should walk and give rain upon thy land, which thou hast given to thy people for an inheritance. So rain is an inheritance that the Lord has given to us. Can you imagine that? That's some heavy stuff right there. Rain is an inheritance. Hmm. That's heavy. That's why in Brazil, in Brazil, guess what? They're making our people over there in Brazil to pay rain tax because they want to take rain water. So they are making the people pay for the inheritance that the Lord given unto us. You can't make this stuff up. Okay? But rain is our inheritance. Read. If there be in the land famine, if there be pestilence, mm, blasting, stop right there. mild you. Wait, 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 wait. Read verse 37 again slow. First Kings chapter 37. Chapter 8, verse 37. Read. If there be in the land famine. Mm -hmm. If there be pestilence. Stop right there. So, these are the two things that are going on right now at the same time. Famine and pestilence. Because of what? Sin. Because of sin. Our people still don't get it. That is because of sin. If there be in the land famine... If there be pestilence, the COVID-19, you understand? Famine, you see, by the, you see that there's a famine has started already by what the people is doing. Go ahead. Blasting, mildew, locust, or if there be caterpillar, if their enemy besiege them in the land of their cities, whatsoever plague, whatsoever sickness they be, you see that thing? Whatsoever plague, whatsoever sickness they be. Now in 2021, we have the COVID-19 pandemic. The COVID-19 pandemic, but the Lord is the one that is controlling these scientists to concoct these things in their labs. Okay, come on. Verse 38. What prayer and supplication soever be made by any man, or by all the people Israel, or by all thy people Israel, which shall know every man the plague of his own heart mm -hmm. and spread forth his hands toward this house. You see what he's saying? So now he's moved from the plague that is plaguing the whole nation of Israel. Then it says the plague of his own heart. The plague of your own heart is what? 
Give me that in Sirach chapter 6. Watch this. This is what it means, the plague of your own heart. Sirach 6 verse 2. Ecclesiastes chapter 6 verse 2. Extol not thyself in the counsel of thine own heart, mm -hmm. that thy soul be not torn in pieces as a bull straying alone. Do you see what the Lord is saying? He says, don't extol, meaning don't exalt yourself in the counsel of your own heart, that your soul be not torn in pieces as a bull straying alone. Because guess what? You are definitely going to convince yourself and you're going to think you are right. Guess what the Lord is saying? He says, that thy soul be not torn in pieces as a bull straying alone. Because now you, you decide to go outside of the protection of the laws of the Mosai. You focus, you what? You rely on your own mind. Guess what the Lord says? Your own mind is what's going to destroy you. That's what he's saying right there. You understand? Let's go back. First Kings chapter 8. Okay. When it says the plague of your own heart. When you exalt yourself in your own counsel, okay? First Kings chapter 8, verse 38 again. First Kings chapter 8, verse 38. What prayer and supplication soever be made by any man or by all the, thy people Israel, which shall know every man the plague of his own heart and spread forth his hands toward this house. Mm-hmm. So what he's saying is that the nation of Israel were in sin. We must spread forth our hands towards this house. Any one of us have a problem. We have got a plague, mental plagues, the spirit, the mental hang-ups. Because when he says the plague of your heart, that's a mental hang-up, what he's talking about. He says, spread forth your hands towards this house. That's why when we pray now, we face towards Jerusalem. We face towards that house. So that the Lord will be able to hear our prayers and forgive our sins. You understand? Read. Then hear thou in heaven thy dwelling place mm -hmm. and forgive and do and give to every man according to his ways. Read. Whose heart thou knowest, for thou, even thou only, knowest the hearts of all the children of men. You see what the Lord is saying? He says he knows all the hearts of the children of men. Watch this. Give me Second Ezra, okay? Second Ezra chapter 16. Second Ezra chapter 16 verse 63. You know what? Start at verse 62. Second Ezra chapter 6, verse 62. Second Ezra chapter 6, verse 62. Mm -hmm. So there's no 62, sir. No, no. Six, uh, second Ezra chapter 16. What verse you at? Second Ezra. So I was in chapter 6. Apologies. Okay, 16 verse 62. Let's start there. Second Ezra chapter 16 verse 62. Go ahead. Yea, and the spirit of all and the spirit of Almighty God, which made all things, and searched out all hidden things in the secrets of the earth. He says, the, the spirit of the Lord, he says, is searched out all things in the secrets of the hidden things. In the secrets of the earth. Watch this next verse. Come on. Surely he knoweth your inventions. Mm -hmm. And what ye think in your hearts. Even them that sin. And mm -hmm. would hide their sin. Now some heavy stuff right there. This is a heavy stuff. Read again verse 63. Second Ezra chapter 16 verse 63. Come on. Surely he knoweth your inventions. What you think in your heart. Stop right there. Even now, that's heavy right there. He says, Surely he knoweth your inventions. Because guess what? Is the inventions is the wicked imaginations of men. You understand? He says, What you think in your heart. Whatever you think, whatever thoughts you think, they are deep, they are hit. The Lord says, I see all of them. You can't hide from me. Okay. It says, even meaning indeed, them that sin. You see that thing? And would hide their sins. Now that's heavy right there. Go ahead. Even them that sin. And would hide their sin. Mm -hmm. Therefore have the Lord. Exactly searched out all your works. 
and he will put you all to shame. Now that's heavy right there. The most I don't play games when it comes to this. Especially when it comes to us, the Lord don't play games. He wants us to do right by him. We must make the most I God look good upon this earth forever. Go ahead. And when your sins are brought forth, ye shall be ashamed before men. Mm -hmm. And your own sins shall be your accusers in that day. Now that's heavy right there. He says your own sins shall be your accusers in that day. Meaning your own sin will speak against you. That's what he's saying. Now that's heavy. Go ahead. Verse 66. Watch this. What will you do? Or how will you hide your sins before God and his angels? Now that's heavy. You see this part right there when he says, what will you do? Or how will you hide your sins before God and his angels? So now, yes, the most High God, you can't hide that from the Lord, the, the Lord. Okay. You see the angels, he says, and his angels right here. You might think he's talking about, yes, he's making reference to Michael and Gabriel and Uriel and Raphael and so forth. But he's also talking about, guess what he's talking about also? Give me that in 1 Corinthians chapter 6. Let me show you what he's talking about. Watch this. First, First Corinthians chapter 6. First Corinthians 6 um, and verse 3. First Corinthians chapter 6 verse 3. Mm -hmm. Know ye not that we shall judge angels? How much more things that pertain to this life? He says, do you not know that we shall judge angels? He's talking about the saints that shall judge the world in verse 2. He said, do you not know that we shall judge angels? How much more things that pertain to this life? So is it saying that we're going to be judging Gabriel and Michael? No. The judge, the angels here is making reference to what? Men on earth. You understand? So when it says the, the he reveals his secrets to his, he, to the, the, the Lord knows the secret things of what man thinks, it says, and his angels too. Because remember, there's an angel for every person on this earth. Everybody has an angel. They are writing down what the nigger be up to. Okay? That nigger right there, he's writing down. You understand? Wherever you go, he's got books. He's just writing down whatever you're doing, the things you say and all of that. And guess what? The things you say will be messed up, what messed up against the, the things that are written. When judgment comes, it's going to be say, okay, the books are going to be open. The, your books, your book about you and the book, the, book, the book of the law, the book of life, the Bible. They're going to be doing some cross-references. Did you repent from this? Let's see. No, he did not. Did you repent from this? Yes, he did. Did you repent from this one? He did not. You see that? That's what's going to happen. So the angel is sitting there just be writing. Here. His beard is just writing whatever. Right now, you know when you, when you, you be seeing your angel in the corner of your eye, you think you're seeing some shadow, or you be looking down, you seeing something bright in front of you. Yes, that's your angel right there. He just be writing. Because sometimes, you know, you can, he, he can allow you to see him, but you just see some shadow or some bright light. My point is, everything has been recorded. You can't hide it from him. You understand? So guess what? That goes into the angels, but it also goes into the leaders that the Lord will set up. Don't get it twisted. That's why what I'm, what, one thing I'm, I'm noticing is that brothers, especially brothers, brothers that be studying, brothers be asking questions. There's certain questions that brothers ask, and I can tell that this brother don't believe. He don't believe the scriptures. Some brothers be asking questions. They have a doubtful spirit, and they have an argumentative spirit. That lets me know you don't believe anything that you are reading. You don't believe anything that's coming out. But you're just here just faking the funk. Okay? Yeah, we can tell. Don't get it. I can tell, Bella. Just by talking to five minutes, I can tell. You don't believe this. The prayer is the class is coming out. They will what? They will help you to get your mind right. But some of you, you don't want to do it. Okay? Topic for another day. Give me that in Sarah chapter 42. Sarah 42 verse 20. You know what? Let's start at verse 19. Hmm. Let's start at verse 18. Sarah 42 verse 18. Watch this. 
Ecclesiastes chapter 42 verse 18. Mm. You know what? Start of verse 17. Mm. That's heavy right there. Start of verse 17. Ecclesiastes chapter 42 verse 17. Read. The Lord hath not given power to the saints to declare all his marvelous works, which the almighty Lord firmly settled that whosoever is might whosoever is might be established for his glory. So now it says, the Lord hath not given power to the saints to declare, to declare all his marvelous works. He's not saying he did not give the saints power to declare his marvelous works. He's saying all his marvelous works. That's the key right there. But there are some works that the Lord will what will put upon the saints to declare those things. Read verse 18 now. Come on. Verse 18. Mm -hmm. He seeketh out deep and the heart and considereth their crafty devices. Mm -hmm. For the Lord knoweth all that may be known. And he beholdeth the signs of the world. You see what he's saying? He says, he seeketh out the deep and the heart and consider that they are crafty devices. That's the same thing we read in Second Esdras. For the Lord knoweth all that all that may be known. And and what and he beholdeth the signs of the world. Next verse. Watch this. Come on. He declared the things that are past mm -hmm. and for to come. Read. And revealed the steps of the of hidden things. The Lord revealed steps of hidden things. Come on. No thought escapeth him. Come on. Neither any word is hidden from him. Read verse 20 again. That's verse 20 is a heavy verse. Read it again. Ecclesiastes 42 verse 20. Mm -hmm. No thought escapeth him. Neither any word is hidden, is hidden from him. He says, no thought escapeth the most high. Every whatever thought you have, he said, the Lord, the most high God, none of your thoughts escape the Lord. He says, no thought escapeth him. Read that again, verse 20. Ecclesiastes chapter 42, verse 20. Mm -hmm. No thought escapeth him. Neither any word is hidden from him. None, nothing is hidden from the most high. Watch this. Give me second Ezra. Chapter 16, I believe. Second Ezra chapter 16. Let me see. Second Ezra chapter 16 and verse 53. Read that. Second Ezra chapter 16, verse 53. Mm -hmm. Let not the sinner say that he hath not sinned. For God shall burn coals of fire upon his head, which saith before the Lord God and his glory, I have not sinned. You see that meaning making excuses for your sins. It says, let not the sinner say that he hath not sinned. Meaning what? Don't sugarcoat your sins. Keep it hundred with the most high. For God shall bend coals of fire upon his head. Guess what? This is what it means. Give me the book of Luke 24. Okay. You know what? Give me Luke 17. Luke 17 verse 28. You might start with 27. Luke 17, 27. Read that. Luke chapter 17 verse 27. Mm-hmm. They did eat, they drank, they, mar they married wives, they were given in marriage until the day that Noah, that Noah, 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 uh, Noah is Noah, right? Until the day that Noah entered into the ark and the flood came and destroyed them all. Until the day that Noah entered into the ark, the flood came and destroyed them all. Watch this. Next verse. Come on. We are dealing with what we read in Second Ezra. It says, "The Lord shall shall burn coals of fire upon his head." We're gonna read what that means. Go ahead. Likewise, also, as it was in the days of Lot, they did eat, they drank, they bought, they sold, they planted, they builded. They planted, they builded. Read on. Meaning what? They were just going about their business, carefree. Okay, go ahead. But the same day that Lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. Now that's heavy right there. It says, the day when until the day that Lot went out of Sodom, it rained 
fire and brimstone from heaven and destroy them all. Watch the next verse. Go ahead. Even thus shall it be in the day when the Son of Man is revealed. You see what, what's going to happen when the Lord returns? The same way it was during the time of Noah, the time of Lord Sodom and Gomorrah, the five cities being burned down to the ground, is as likewise when the Lord returns, is going to be just like that. They are going to be what? They're going to be eating. They're going to be drinking. They're going to be planting. They're going to be selling and buying. You understand? Then the big boom will happen. Okay? The big boom will happen. Watch this. First Kings 18. First Kings chapter 18, verse 45. Read that. First Kings chapter 18, verse 45. Come on. And it came to pass in the meanwhile that the heaven was black with clouds and wind, and there was a great rain, and Ahab rode and went to, Je and, and went to Jezreel. He, he went to the north. Jezreel was in the land of the north. Hmm, that sounds familiar, doesn't it? Read verse 45 again. First Kings chapter 18, verse 45. Mm -hmm. And it came to pass in the meanwhile that the heaven was black with clouds and wind. And there was a great rain. And Ahab rode and went to Jezreel. So now it says, it says the heaven was black with clouds and with wind and wind. And there was a great rain. And Ahab rode and went to Jezreel. Give me that in Matthew 24, verse 29. Matthew 24, verse 29. Matthew 24, verse 29. Come on. Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light, mm -hmm. and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. So now what you are seeing here, this is the second coming of Christ here. What we were reading about in Luke 17, that we are reading about the same thing here. So now he's, say, he's saying, um, it says, um, after the tribulation of those days, the tribulation of those days talk about slavery, okay? Because then at that point, we are going to be delivered from the hands of our enemies. It says, it says shall the sun be darkened and the moon shall not give her light. Guess what's going to happen to the heavens? The heavens was going to be black with clouds. The clouds is the chariots, okay? That's what's going to happen. That's what we just read in First in Kings chapter 8, 18, verse 45. It says, the moon shall not give a light and the stars shall fall from heaven. The stars talk about the satellites up there. You understand? Their communication is going to be shut down on that day. And the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. Meaning these kingdoms are going to be shook when the Lord makes his second coming. Go ahead. Verse 30. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. Mm -hmm. Read. And then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn. The tribes is talking they, about us. Read. And they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with mm. power and great glory. With power and great glory. That's some heavy stuff right there. He says they're going to see the Son of Man coming. Meaning everybody going to see him. Everybody's going to see the Son of Man coming. Everybody going to see that. Watch this. Give me that in Revelation 1. Everybody going to see him on that day. Revelation chapter 1 verse 7. Revelation chapter 1 verse 7. Go ahead. Behold, he cometh with clouds, mm -hmm. and every eye shall see him. You see that thing? Every eye shall see him on that day. Everybody going to see him. Don't nobody going to be confused. Everybody going to know on that day. That's the Lord right there. Go ahead. And they also which pierced him. Whoa, and all whoa, whoa, hold on. It says, and they also which pierced him. That's our mothers, our fathers, our uncles. That say crucify him. Mm -hmm. Meaning they also, their spirits, are, the Lord is going to make them remember on that day. Read. And they also which pierced him. And all kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him. Mm -hmm. Even so, amen. Even so, amen. Amen to that. Amen to that. Okay. Now let's go back to the book of First Kings. Okay. No, no. Second Esdras, chapter 16. Let's finish that up. 
Second Ezra chapter 16, verse 53 again. Second Ezra chapter 16, verse 53. Mm -hmm. Let not the sinner say that he hath not sinned. For God shall bring coals of fire upon his head, which saith before the Lord God and his glory, I have not sinned. Read. Behold, the Lord knoweth all the works of men, their, their imaginations, their thoughts, and their hearts. You see what the Lord, that's why it says, no thought escapes the Lord. No thought escape him. Read that again, verse 54. Second Ezra chapter 16, verse 54. Behold, the Lord knoweth all the works of men, their imagination, their thoughts, and their hearts. And their thoughts, their imagination, and their hearts. Let's go back to First Kings now. First Kings chapter 8. First Kings chapter 8 and verse 38. First Kings chapter 8, verse 38. Come on. What prayer and supplication soever be made by any man or by all the people, all thy people Israel, which shall know every man the plague of his own heart and shall spread forth his hands toward this house. Go ahead. Then hear thou in heaven thy dwelling place and forgive and do and give to every man according to his ways, whose hearts thou knowest. Mm -hmm. For thou, even thou, even thou only knowest the hearts of all the children of men. That's what we just read. All the precepts that we went over is what for this right here. Go ahead. That they may fear thee all the days that they live in the land which, which thou gavest unto, their, unto our fathers. You see what he's saying? It says that they may fear thee all the days that they live in the land which thou gavest unto our fathers. Meaning the other nations, we, they're going to fear us because of what? Because the Lord gave us the laws and he taught us how to maintain our state of rulership. Okay, go ahead. Moreover, concerning a stranger that is not of thy people Israel, of a far country for thy name's sake. Okay, read verse 41 once again. First Kings of the 8 verse 41. Mm -hmm. Moreover, concerning a stranger that is not of thy people Israel, but cometh out of a far country for thy name's sake. Now that's heavy right here. This is talking about the other nations now. Verse 41. Read verse 41 again. First Kings chapter 8 verse 41. Moreover, concerning a stranger that is not of thy people Israel, but cometh out of a far country for thy name's sake. So now it says concerning the other nations that is not of thy people Israel, but cometh out of a far country for thy name's sake, meaning what? To worship the Lord. Okay? Watch this. Go ahead. Of thy strong hand and of thy stretched out mm. arm. Come on. When he shall come and pray toward this house. Read verse 42 again. Come on. First Kings of the 8 verse 42. For they shall hear of thy great name, and of thy strong hand, and of thy stretched out arm. When he shall come and pray toward this place, it says, it says for toward this says, house. Because, because, hold on. So the strangers that are not the Israelites, it says, coming to, to what? It says they're going to come to Jerusalem to pray for the, for the name of the Lord, for, the, for, for them to get healing and blessings. It says, for they shall hear of thy great name and of thy strong hand, and of thy stretched out arm, when he shall come to pray towards this house. Go ahead, watch this. Hear thou in heaven thy dwelling place, mm -hmm. and do according to all that the stranger called to thee for, that all the people of the earth may know thy name, to fear thee, as do thy people Israel, and that they may know that this house which I have built it, is called by thy name. So now, you see verse 41, verse 41, verse 41 to verse 43. This goes into the other nations, that the other nations, when they pray, 
they are, the Lord is going to hear their prayers. And they, guess what? Because they've confessed the name of the Lord, our God. The Lord will bless them and will give them blessings. But this will only happen if we're in rulership and keeping the commandments. Right now, when the other nations, when they pray, the Lord is not going to answer their prayers because we are not in order. We are out of order as a people. We're not keeping the commandments. So when the other nations, when they pray, the Lord don't hear them. Give me that in Zechariah 8 verse 23. Watch this. Zechariah chapter 8 verse 23. Mm. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, In those days it shall come to pass that ten men shall take hold out of, out of all languages of the nations, even shall take hold of the skirts of him that is a Jew, saying... Uh, you see that? It says, even shall take hold of the skirt of him that is a Jew, meaning they're going to cleave unto us. Go ahead. Saying, we will go with you, for we have heard that God is with you. You see that thing? So the reason why they're going to cleave unto us is because they will know that the Lord is with us. That only happens in the kingdom, not right now in slavery. In the kingdom, when we keep the commandments, so this right here, when it says, they shall cleave to the house of Jacob, yes, like we read in Isaiah 14, verse 1 through 3, that's what this is going into. That's why, let's go to the book of Mark, I think. Mm, let me see real quick. One second. Mm, Mark. Mm. Give me Mark 7, Mark 7, verse 25. Mark chapter 7, verse 25. Come on. For a certain woman whose young daughter had an unclean spirit heard of him. And came and fell at his feet. So this woman has a daughter that has got an unclean spirit, right? Go ahead. The woman was a Greek. A Syrophoenician. It was like she was a Greek, a Syrophoenician woman. She has an Edomite. Go ahead. A Syrophoenician by nation. And she besought him that she would cast forth the devil out of her daughter. Go ahead. But Jesus said to her, let the children first be filled. For it is not meat to take the children's bread and cast it unto the dogs. So now he's saying, he says, but Jesus said unto her, let the children first be filled. You understand? For it is not meat to take the children's bread and cast it to the dogs. So he's saying the children must first, first the children must be filled first. Meaning what? We must get our inheritance first. You understand? The Lord must establish us in our land and so forth. After that, then the nations, when they pray, the Lord will answer their prayers. That's when the nations will get their blessings. But right now, that's not going to happen. We have to get our glory first, first, then the nations after. The same way that like it was done to the time of Genesis, so it is today. When the Lord returns, that's exactly what's going to happen. We're going to go back to how things used to be back then. You understand? Deuteronomy 32 real quick. Deuteronomy chapter 32 verse 8. Read that. Deuteronomy 32 verse 8. With the most high divided to the nations the inheritance when he separated the sons of Adam he set the bounds of the people according to the number of the children of Israel. You see that thing? He says, when the Mosai divided to the nations. So it's not just the division of inheritance to the children of Israel only. No. It's the division of inheritance to all the nations that the Lord created. So he's saying, when the Mosai divided to the nations their inheritance, 
when he separated the sons of Adam. So now he separated us from the rest of the nations that also they have an inheritance of some sort. You understand? But not the same inheritance that we have. Our inheritance is the kingdom. Our inheritance is these nations. Their nations are our inheritance. You understand? Their inheritance is to serve and to get the blessing through servitude. Okay, read that again, verse 8. Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 8. When the Most High divided to the nations their inheritance, when he separated them, he set the bounds of the people according to the number of the children of Israel. You see that thing? Go back to First Kings now. First Kings chapter 8. First Kings chapter 8, verse 44. First Kings chapter 8, verse 44. Mm -hmm. If thy people go out to battle against their enemy, whithersoever thou shalt send them, and shall pray unto, unto the Lord toward the city which thou hast chosen, toward the house that I have built for thy name. Read. Then hear thou in heaven their prayer and their supplication and maintain their cause. You see that thing? So when we keep God's commandments, that's the only time when the Lord will maintain our cause. Read. If they sin against thee, for there is no man that sinneth not, and thou be angry with them, and deliver them to the enemy, so that they carry them away captives unto the land of the enemy, far or near. So he says, if we sin against the Lord, because all Israel we sinned, if you read Daniel 9, Verse 11 down, you understand? All Israel, we broke the commandments, you understand? And we was delivered to the hands of our enemies in the lands of our captivity to serve slavery before the Lord returns and repent in these lands. Read. Yet, if they shall bethink themselves in the land whether they were carried captives and repent and make supplication unto thee in the land of them that carried them captive, saying, we have sinned and have mm -hmm. done perversely. We have committed wickedness. So that's what we must do in the lands of our captivity, which is what we are doing now. We must repent and give supplication unto the Most High God and confess that we have sinned, we have done perversely, we have committed wickedness. That's what the Lord wants from us. Read on. And so return unto thee with all their heart and with all their soul in the land of their enemies which led them away captive, and pray unto thee toward their land, which thou gavest unto their fathers, the city which thou hast chosen, and the house which I have built for thy name. Read. Then hear thou their prayer, and their supplication in heaven, thy dwelling place, and maintain cause. You see that thing? And maintain our cause. So King Solomon is praying for our blessings, he is praying for us to receive blessings if we move in the straight and narrow. We keep the commandments of the Lord. The Lord is praying for the blessing, for the Lord to bless us. We go against the commandments, the Lord will judge us. That's why we ended up in slavery in the lands of our captivity. But in the lands of our captivity, the Lord is Solomon is prophesying that we would bethink ourselves. And when we do, we will repent. That is what's going on right now. Go ahead. And forgive thy people that have sinned against thee, and all their transgressions, wherein they have transgressed against thee, and give them compassion before them who carried them captives, that they may have compassion on them. You see what he's saying? He says, the Lord, he says what? He says, and give them compassion before them who carried them captive, that they may have compassion on them. Our enemies for us, in order for our enemy, our enemies don't necessarily out of their goodness of their own heart to have compassion on us. No, it's because of the Lord doing that. The Lord is showing us mercy by putting the spirit on our enemies to have compassion on us as we are keeping these laws in the lands of our captivity. Okay, go ahead. For they be thy people and thine inheritance, which thou broughtest forth out of Egypt, from the midst of the furnace of iron. You see that thing? From the midst of the furnace of iron. Captivity. 
had bondage for 400 years. Read. Come on. That thine eyes may be open unto the supplication of thy servants and unto the supplication of thy people Israel to hearken unto them in all that they call for unto thee. Read. For thou didst separate them from among all the people of the earth now that's to be then. He says, For thou didst separate them from among all the people of the earth. The most that we, we don't, we are not like any other nation on this earth. We are the salt of the earth. You understand? We give the world flavor with the word of God. So now he's saying, for thou didst separate them from among all the people of the earth. Read. To be the inheritance. We are the inheritance of the Lord. Like we read in 32. Read. As thou speakest by the hand of Moses thy servant. Mm -hmm. When thou broughtest our fathers out of Egypt, O Lord God. Read. And it was so that when Solomon had made an end of praying, all this prayer and supplication unto the, unto the Lord, he arose from before the altar of the Lord, from kneeling on his knees with his hands spread to, to heaven. You see that thing? And remember, as he's speaking like this, millions and millions of people are listening to him. Think about that. No speaker, no mic, no nothing. Do you understand? He was able to exalt his voice that all the millions of all 12, remember, under Solomon, all 12. And there was peace on every side. So now you really have to imagine really the level of um, the spirit that the Lord put upon our forefathers. You understand? Heavy stuff. Okay, keep going. Verse 55, and he, come on. And he stood and blessed all the congregation of Israel with a loud voice saying. With a what? With a loud voice saying. With a loud voice. With a loud voice. His voice was so loud that it was able to, de to what? To, prog to propagate among millions and millions of, of Israelites listening to him after the temple was done when he was dedicating the temple and everybody had everything that he said. Read. Blessed be the Lord that had given rest unto his people Israel mm -hmm. according to all that he promised. There has not failed one word of all his good promise, mm -hmm. which he promised by the hand of Moses, his servant. So now the promises that we're reading about, you see verse 56 goes into Deuteronomy 28 verse 1 through 14. That's the promises he's talking about because we have the kingdom at this point. You understand? We had the kingdom. We was ruling. So when he says all the promises, he says, he says, um, there has not failed one word of all his good promise, which he promised by the hand of Moses the servant. Because Deuteronomy 28, Leviticus 26, it goes into that. Leviticus 26, verse uh, 3 down to verse 14, I believe somewhere there, saying the same thing in Deuteronomy 28, the blessings. So that's what he's talking about right here. He's referencing, he's, 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 he's quoting Deuteronomy 28, verse 1 through 14. That's what he's quoting. Read. The Lord our God be with us, mm -hmm. as he was with our fathers. Let him not leave us, nor forsake us. Read. That he may incline our heart unto him to walk in all his ways and to keep his commandments and his statutes and his judgments, which he commanded our fathers. Read. And let these words, and let these my words, wherewith I have made supplication before the Lord, be nigh unto the Lord our God day and night, that he maintain the cause of his servants and the cause of his people Israel at all times, as the manner, as the manner, as the matter shall require. Read. That all the people of the earth may know that the Lord is God and that there is none else. Come on. Let your heart, let your heart therefore be perfect with the Lord our God 
to walk in his statutes and to keep his commandments as at this day. That thing, all praises to the Most High. All praises to the Most High God for that thing. I'm going to end the class right here, okay? I'm going to end the class right here. Um, let's break bread. First Corinthians 11, verse 23. Let's break bread, all right? First Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same man also, he took the cup when he had supped, saying, this cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause, many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. In the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen.